There's a brand new Jeep Cherokee coming for 2021, so these are the top five things you need to know about it. Number five, it gets a completely brand new chassis. So this is not just a makeover or a refresh, this is a completely new generation of the Grand Cherokee. In fact, it's gonna be called the WL Generation. Now the chassis is currently in use at Fiat Chrysler. Right now it underpins the Stelvio, which is an SUV, and the Giulia, which is a four-door sedan. And it's an excellent chassis, it's very stiff. I've driven it, I really like it. I think it's a great move for Chrysler to go in this direction. One of the key things that they're gonna do is they're gonna make the Grand Cherokee bigger and a little bit longer than the current one. The Grand Cherokee has been on its current platform for quite a while, in fact, since 2011. So you might ask yourself, why hasn't Chrysler updated this thing? Well, it's actually been selling really, really well. Year over year, if you go back from 2011 and you go up to 2019, the sales have increased pretty much every single year in a row. In fact, in 2019, they sold nearly a quarter million of these. So we know that Chrysler FCA is not gonna do something revolutionary with the new Jeep Grand Cherokee. I expect the styling and the overall impression of the vehicle to be somewhat evolutionary. Now, so far, this has been a very sly and rare beast to spot. There are some spy photos that have been spotted around Detroit, and these are from Motor One, and you can see it is wearing rather heavy camouflage. Now the proportions I think are gonna be fairly similar to the current Grand Cherokee, but this camo is really, really quite heavy. It's difficult to see anything except the lower part of the grill. It does appear to have some traditional elements of styling. However, underneath the camo, the dark camo, there does appear to be a lighter colored layer there, which is hiding everything. The headlights are pretty well hidden. Really the only thing that you can see right now are the wheels. The rear has got some heavy camouflage on it as well. You can see the taillights look perhaps a little bit thinner than the current version. Overall, it does look to be a slightly longer vehicle and there is something on the hood. I don't know if that's a power bump or perhaps that's just some piece of camouflage, perhaps a little bit of foam. Up around the rear view mirror, you can see a camera. So I think we can expect some sort of more advanced safety features. Number four, the interior should be quite different and quite a bit more luxurious. So what we're looking at here is a torn piece of paper, which is apparently from a presentation on the WL interior. Now you can see up in the upper left corner here, it looks quite futuristic. It's got this sort of waterfall style center console which flows down into the cabin and doesn't seem to have a steering wheel here, but the, the gauge cluster seems to be quite a bit smaller than the current one. The overall feeling that I'm getting is much more luxurious than the current one, much more futuristic. This looks like a really big step forward for the interior and I think that's gonna be the biggest difference really in the look and feel of the vehicle is the interior. Now under cluster it has two specifications. That's gonna be for the center display I believe. So it says new 10.1 inch high def TFT and new seven inch high def TFT. So maybe the upper level trim packages are gonna have a 10.1 inch display and the lesser, the lower levels a seven inch display. Now, the Ram, currently the Ram 1500, has a 12-inch display, and 10.1 inches seems a little bit small considering the direction that cars are going in right now. Remember, this is from 2019, so we gotta take it with a little bit of grain of salt, but that seems to be what was on the product planner's mind at this point. Now, it's got a separate rear heating and ventilation control, which is pretty nice, and the gear select appears to be a rotary gear select. Now, personally, I'm not the biggest fan of rotary gear selects. I prefer the traditional lever that you pull forward and back. Everybody's familiar with that, but it seems to be perhaps the direction they're going with this. It does have a terrain select knob as well, so I think we're looking at maybe two knobs there. Could be a little confusing. Again, it's a bit early to tell. Now, one thing that I noticed under brand components is a seat massage switch on the door. The more luxurious cars have massaging seats. I think it'd be pretty nice to see this in the Grand Cherokee. Also heated and cooled seats. I love a cool butt on a hot day. It just feels really, really nice to have cooled seats. I wish there was an option. I wish that was an option on more vehicles, actually. What's also cool is that it seems to have electronic pedal adjust. So that's 
pretty neat way of getting comfortable. Of course, it's gonna have power seats too, so that's just another way of getting comfortable. That's pretty neat. And then way down on the bottom right, it says pedals, accelerator, brake, clutch. I don't know that this is actually gonna come with a manual transmission, but this seems to be on the product planning page at least. Now overall, I expect a lot more technology. I expect a lot more safety features built into this based on that little camera up there. I just did a review of the 2020 Toyota Corolla and it has got a whole range of safety features that are standard from the base model up, including all kinds of driver assist features. So I would expect that's gonna be something we will definitely see in the upcoming Jeep Grand Cherokee. And by the way, if you like this content, please consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel and it helps me bring you more automotive news. Number three, there will be a three row version of this vehicle. We don't know exactly what it's going to be called, but it does seem like there is gonna be a longer version of the vehicle and Motor Authority managed to grab some photos of it. Now it does seem to have very similar styling to the two row version that I just showed you. Obviously it's wearing pretty heavy camouflage, but the front nose looks the same and it does appear to be quite a bit longer. This is definitely what I would call a full size SUV. This is a big truck. It's got a longer overhang over the rear, so you should have more cargo capacity and you should have more interior volume too. The taillights on this look a little bit different and what we don't really know is what it's gonna be called. There is a product plan document which dates back to 2018. And you can see in the middle under the D segment, there is by 2022, a new Cherokee and a low D three row. So it doesn't really have a name yet. It's difficult to say if it's gonna have the Jeep Cherokee moniker or something else associated with it, but we can expect a pretty big SUV coming out. I'm not sure it's gonna come out at the same time, but it's definitely in the cards as we can see from these spy photos. So if you're looking for something with a long wheelbase and you want three rows and you like FCA products, this is probably worth waiting for. Number two, there's gonna be a lot of engine choices for this vehicle. There's a website called Allpar that monitors Chrysler and Dodge and Ram news, and they claim that there's gonna be two engines available at the introduction, which we're already familiar with. Now they claim that the Pentastar V6 and the Hemi V8 are gonna be available at launch. Pentastar family of engines was introduced in 2011 and it has various displacements from three liters going all the way up to 3.6. The 3.6 is very heavily used in the current lineup. There's also a pretty heavy rumor that a two liter engine is going to be available, but perhaps not at launch. And the current speculation is that this two liter engine might be the base engine and it might replace the Pentastar V6. So I think they're gonna introduce these traditional engines first because buyers are used to that. And then perhaps in six months or maybe in the second year, the four cylinder might come out as an option or it might be the base engine. Now presumably it would have a similar horsepower and torque rating. So if we look in the FCA lineup of available engines, we have something called the two liter, the GME, the multi-air, and it is currently used in the Alpha Julia. It makes 280 horsepower and 306 pounds-feet of torque. And really interestingly, just a couple days ago, FCA announced that the GME, the Turbo 4 engines, are gonna be built in the US at the Kokomo, Indiana plant, and that they are gonna add 200 jobs for this. So it seems like they are gonna make a big, heavy move towards this engine, so I think it's very likely that this engine is going to be used in the Grand Cherokee. Now currently there is a two liter engine available in the Wrangler along with a battery and an electric motor. It's called the e-torque system and it adds, there's a 48 volt electric motor which goes along with the two liter engine and it makes a total of 295 pounds feet of torque. So this is a mild hybrid. And I think it's almost a certainty that we're gonna see some type of mild hybrid system in the Grand Cherokee because the world is moving towards better fuel economy. So is it gonna be available just as a four cylinder? Perhaps, is it gonna be available as a mild hybrid? I think that's a strong possibility as well. So currently in the Grand Cherokee, you've got the 3.6 liter V6. It makes 293 horsepower, 260 pounds feet of torque. If you want the V8, the 5.7 liter, you need to get the limited and above package and that has 360 horsepower and 390 pounds feet of torque. So considering this vehicle is likely to be heavier and it's definitely bigger than the current uh, Grand Cherokee, we're gonna have to, these upcoming motors are gonna have to sort of meet that 
that's standard really, but get better gas mileage. Now, of course, right now you can get the SRT version, which is the 6.4 liter naturally aspirated, makes 475 horsepower and about the same amount of torque. And of course, everybody wants to know about the Trackhawk, which is the 6.2 liter supercharged engine, makes 707 horsepower. There's a couple other configurations too. So is there gonna be a Trackhawk version of the Grand Cherokee? My guess is almost certainly, but probably not at launch. I think they're gonna to wanna to roll out the more broadly selling versions. And then what they've always done in the past is they brought the Trackhawk versions a little bit later in the model run. So will the 6.4 or the 5.7 liter engine be available at launch? Hard to say right now. It's still a little bit early. They're certainly both very strong engines, but the 6.4 liter that I've driven, it's a fantastic engine by the way, does not get very good fuel economy. I drove it in the SRT wide body Challenger and I got about, I think I got about 14 miles a gallon, 17 on the highway. Now there's another possibility, which is an inline six engine that is around three liters. We don't know what the horsepower would be. FCA was working on this back in 2018 and I haven't heard a lot since then, I'm not sure if the engine will continue, if it's gonna be in current development, it certainly might be. That's also a possibility for the Grand Cherokee. I think we can also expect a plug-in hybrid like the Pacifica. In the Pacifica, it makes 260 horsepower combined and it can run 33 miles on the EV, on the electric engine alone, 520 miles range. That's really, really good, about 32 MPG combined, so, I think we're definitely gonna see something like a plug-in hybrid, again, available at launch, don't really know. And the number one thing you need to know about it is when is it gonna be available? The most recent information that we have is that the WL will start production in early 2021. That puts it about six months behind what the previous rumors were gonna be. So it's definitely gonna be a 2021 model. I expect that we are gonna see a debut definitely this year and we should be seeing more spy photography a little bit later this year. What are the possible dates? We've got the New York Auto Show, which is in April. I think that's a little bit too early to see the debut considering we haven't seen a lot of spy photography yet. And then we've got the New York Auto Show, which is going to be in early June. That seems like a possible date for the reveal. But as you know, the auto industry has been moving towards standalone events. And if they do bring it out as a 2021 model and it's available in 2021, if they don't start production until early that year, I think we might see a debut perhaps even as late as the LA Auto Show, which is in November. There's two videos on screen right now. If you enjoy automotive content like this, please subscribe. My name is Eric and I will see you in the next video.